and I am High Spirit once again, everyone. And coming up now, we have Soul Blazer by Axeman. And with that, one quick uh, donation for you from Roro Kobo that says, good luck on your run, Axeman. Kick butt. Ha-cha. So this is Soul Blazer, and I am the Axe Man. And you may know me from such tasks as uh, various ones I've shown, but today I'll be playing normally as a human in a fairly fast action game. And um, so yeah, this is this is very exciting. And we have here Puexel. Hello, hello. And I mean, so many people know this game. Um, so it, it was so great to have um, to get a chance to, to run this game at RP Limit Break. There's a lot of history, um, and. I guess uh, the, the next chapter in history will, will be um, whatever our name is from our donations. Well, with that last donation at the end, it is good luck and or ever hates <laughs> for $100. Uh, yeah, Everhate ever um, was, um, was one of the first um, speedrunners of this game really ever and um, he sadly passed away in 2016 but uh, kind of left a big impact on not just the Soul Blazer speedrun community but some others like Dragon Quest and slash Dragon Warrior in particular and um, um, I, I personally like to do a couple runs of Soul Blazer kind of every spring in honor of Everhate so it's it's always nice to um, see some see some see some support too even though it's been seven years since his passing yeah. I didn't know him personally, but um, I followed his uh, his guide for the speed run when I was first learning it. It was, it was real helpful. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we'll be uh, <laughs> thinking about it a lot because we're going to see that name quite a few times here. Um, uh, with that, we're ready to go. When I start moving, that's when time starts. Um, and we'll be saving the world for all creatures because in this game, uh, as we saw in the beginning, uh, all of the creatures have been um, sold, their souls. Uh, if we're ready, I'm going to go. Yeah, just go ahead and give a countdown. Okay. Oh, three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Soul Blazer is an action RPG for the Super Nintendo, released by um, Quintet and published by Enix in 92. Uh, um, it's got a lot of just really cool and unique um, mechanics to it. Um, kind of like kind of like X-Men mentioned, this, the story um, is that um, we're rescuing souls, basically, that have been traded for money by a greedy king named Magrid and sealed in lairs. And that story ties really, really heavily into the gameplay. All throughout all of the dungeon areas we'll be going through, there's a lot of these glowy um, red circles that are monster lairs, and we need to defeat all of the monsters that come out of them, and then a variety of things can happen. We can either unlock things, um, receive items, or release souls. And in this case, we released the Soul of Magician, who's our first companion soul, um, who takes the form of that blue orb that's rotating around um, Everhate, the Soul Blazer. So X-Men's just doing some pre-equipping right now. The menu system uh, in this game lets you kind of select empty slots that will later contain items, and that, that lets you optimize, um, optimize some of your later equips, and then um, with that, we're heading into the underground castle, our first kind of real dungeon here. So we have, basically here we have to beat all the goblins in that first lair in order to be able to open the, a, a way through this fence or whatever you want to call it here. And this is also where um, gems really start to come into play too, because the, when the Soul of Magician joined us, we got the fireball magic too, which for the cost of four gems, gems just being MP for casting spells effectively, get to shoot a fireball that does more damage than the sword we have right now. And then every every time we kill an enemy, it's going to drop a gem, but uh, the size of the gem, in other words, how, whether it's worth one, uh, five, or ten, is random. And then the odds of getting a bigger gem gradually goes up um, over the course of the game. So 
I missed if we actually got any bigger gems from the goblins. We at did. The very we got start. a okay. big gem just now. Nice. Okay. So then for this set of fights here, I, this is a kind of a really good example of how when you're trying to go fast in Soul Blazer, um, you're trying to just do your combat, your required combat, as efficiently as possible. And just because we do have to do both of these monster layers here, the one that has the shooting goblins and the one that has the flies or whatever they are, we're trying to kind of just kind of jet back and forth to spawn enemies from both of them as quickly as possible while, while killing them too. So we just, just do the combat a lot more efficiently. So we had amazing gem drops here. This was, uh, this is like all the gems that we could need for uh, the strats here. Uh, unfortunately, every time we take a warp, um, we're gonna lose our gems though. Um, it's usually not a big deal because we're kind of, you know, we're going to be keeping using our magic, so um, it uh, loses our gems, but we'll, we'll just get them right back. Yeah, and then, yeah, and this is another se sequence here, too, where he's, he's doing two fights at the same time to just get enemies spawn. Because every time an enemy spawns, too, it does have invincibility frames for a bit, too, so we want to kind of get those out of the ways as uh, quickly as possible, too. But, um, yeah, and coming up here, this is our first time we're going to be taking an doing an intentional death um, pretty shortly in order to um, skip backtracking, because uh, whenever you do your character dies in this game from running out of HP, you don't lose any progress in the story um, or clearing mon or monster lairs you've cleared. All, all that happens is that you lose all of your gems, and then you get sent back to the Master's Shrine or basically sent back to town. So that's something that's going to be used pretty extensively throughout the run in order to cut out backtracking. So um, we're unable to progress any further in the underground castle because the elevator that leads to the next section just doesn't work. And in order to get it working, we have to first release the bridge guard in order to get to the other side of town and then release the um, mill keeper here, who I guess is trying to turn the wheel the wrong way. So we have to- uh, <laughs> like that, yeah. We have to, let, we have to uh, remind Apparently. him that it's righty tighty lefty loosey and then um, turn the wheel. Yeah, apparently it's no problem for Blazer here. He's, you know, a super powerful warrior or um, a oh, disciple, yeah. uh, disciple of, of uh, the master. Yeah, if, if anybody's familiar with Act Razor, by the way, that's easily the best known game made by Quintet, the makers of this game. This was their second game on the Super Nintendo about a year and a half, two years later. And uh, there's a lot of reused uh, aspects from Act Razor here, like the sound effect when you take damage, the uh, the HUD elements at the top of the screen, like how your health bar looks in particular, are very uh, very reminiscent of Act Razor. And then, and even kind of the story is a little similar too, because you're playing as an basically an angel, kind of in the service of a deity called the Master, who um, I guess in, in our version of the game at least um, kind of transcends different types of um, religion too in a couple ways. Yeah. At first, it seems like he's uh, this very Christian-like uh, god in the sky, but now it's turning out that we have uh, souls captured, and there's souls not just in uh, people, but in uh, all sorts of other things, and there's reincarnation, so it's a very Japanese blend of whatever religion they thought would be interesting. Mm -hmm. So we just released a pretty important NPC named Lisa, who... Will, who um, who's the daughter of Dr. Leo, the inventor, who's kind of the focus of so much of the story if you read the prologue before starting the game. But uh, we'll, we'll get more into that later. But for the time being, yeah, I mean, um, still going through the underground castle and then just for, for an any percent speed run, it, a lot of the route optimization comes down to just knowing which layers are required in order to either to beat the game at all or to make, go faster and, and or safer and then which ones can be safely skipped, just because there's a lot of other uh, souls that we could release, but just don't, aren't required. I mean, there's a couple that are nice for like safety purposes when you're first learning the run too. Like um, there's one in this town you can release that effectively gives you infinite medical herbs whenever you come back. But, uh, but anyway, so now we're kind of approaching the end of this part of the underground castle. And a really cool optimization you can do here is to take out a couple of those shooter goblins with your fireballs through the walls like that, because magic can go through walls. And because every goblin has invincibility, the more we can kill before we even get to the lair, the faster it goes. So there's actually three different types of like spawning patterns for the layers. 
Um, one is they spawn one at a time. You've got to kill them the, each one before the next one spawns. And that was how that one works, and a lot of these. So you want to, you want to be able to take them out as fast as you can. Uh, there's another type where they spawn, they all spawn, um, but at a certain rate. So they won't all spawn it, you know, real fast. Sometimes they spawn slowly, sometimes they spawn fairly quickly. And so you can kind of let them all spawn and then take them out at once, and you won't lose any time. Uh, and then another one, another way it can be is the enemies are just out there already, and you um, kind of initial spawn, and so you beat them and the layer explodes. So here we're, we're using an item we picked up early in the castle called the Dream Rod, which lets us kind of get our Freddy Krueger on and enter the dreams of um, sleeping characters in town, starting with, uh, with Lisa. And um, fortunately for us, um, we, all we really need to do is just enter Lisa's dream and then step on that um, kind of pseudo monster lair to make some changes to the underground castle in the real world. We don't actually have to finish the cutscene and uh, talk to Lisa some more to find out some more lore about um, herself and her father, Dr. Leo. So she just, she tells us to go away and we do it. Sorry, Lisa, yeah. this is a speed run. I mean, and we're on a mission from God or the master. The master, yeah. Yeah, so X-Man taking a bit of intentional damage um, as he goes here, because this final trip into the underground castle is very brief. We're just going to the part that is opened up now after um, it, after doing Lisa's dream to get the um, Leo's brush, which we need to get to the second uh, dungeon in World One, and then we're just immediately going to uh, do another intentional death after that. All right, pretty solid underground castle. So, um, so at this point, there's actually a little bit of a difficulty spike uh, in the speed run too, because um, there was an armor upgrade that we could have gotten in the underground castle. I think called the iron armor or something yes. like that, and um, that would have given us plus one defense. And yeah. because, we're skip because we're skipping that, um, now enemies in Leo's paintings, the second dungeon, um, uh, will do two damage instead of one. So we just need to be more, way more careful about uh, how much damage we take and when. There also aren't any souls that we actually have to, um, have to rescue in the painting, at least until the boss at the end, which is good for going fast, but um, that also, because another guy, kind of a subtle mechanic too, is that whenever you release a soul, you get a slight heal out of it, which is based on your level. So when you're less than level five, you get one HP back per soul that you release. And just because we we don't, we're, we're not gonna be doing that at all in Leo's painting, all the, all the health we um, have is, is what we start with. All right, and then um, once once X Man accumulates some gems too, there's a couple um, fights he's going to be using some fireballs on to try to um, realize a couple time savings. So of course it's nice to be able to use your magic and beat enemies from a distance. You can do the kind of the multi kill trick. Uh, you can also just use your magic to get a little extra uh, DPS. Yeah, pretty kind of a nice swag fireball there where he was basically hesitating a little bit to get the soul magician to be kind of in the right spot around him and then shoot a fireball to kill all of those false blocks or whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, medical orbs are very important for the run too, starting with uh, the first boss that we're about to fight. Um, but medical orbs you don't actually use, they're used automatically if you have them equipped, but um, if you have one equipped, then if you hit zero HP, you'll just automatically um, get healed to full. All right, so we just got uh, basically one more layer to seal to open the path to uh, the first boss. It's kind of intermittently called either Metal Mantis or Solid Arm, because he also has a cameo in Illusion of Gaia, the sequel. But um, yeah, Solid Arm is, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty, um, it's, it, the, the strategy X-Man's gonna be using is probably pretty different than you remember if you uh, played this game casually. Yeah, sorry, we don't have the tornado spin. All right, so got the medical herb. So if he runs out of when he runs out of health, I should say gets healed. Does a little sidestep there too to kind of bait um, Solid Arm all the way to the end, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little extra head. That, 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 yeah. that running, the, having, being a runner of this game myself, that is, that that is a harder kill than it looks. I mean, because because yeah. it wasn't obvious the the 
bridges leading to the back platform or conveyor belts. So you, it, you, um, you, he was having to kind of go back and forth, kind of tap, yeah. tap the D-pad basically, so that he's his sword is still making contact with Solid Arm's body, but he's not getting pushed all the way into him. And, it, and at the same time, he's shooting fireballs at you. So if you're not aggressive enough, then he's going to kill you with those fireballs. Mm -hmm. And taking a death there is very costly because. Uh, um, in addition to the fact that X-Man skipped the uh, shortcut, basically, because there's um, <coughs> every world has two warp tiles that you can use for fast travel to different different parts of the world, and there's usually one right before the boss. But in that case, it would have taken some extra fights to activate it, so we just skip it. So, so if you if he died, he would have had to walk all the way back, and he probably would have lost his medical herb too, which would have caused some other problems. But uh, but yeah, it was a pretty clean pretty clean first world. So yeah. So before we I guess before we kick it over to High Spirits to do a few donations, just kind of the just the general structure of the game is that there is six main worlds and then a, a, a shorter final seventh world, and then for each one, um, we need to basically just do a couple of dungeon areas in order to unlock the boss. We then after beating the boss, we release the generally the leader of the town, and then who eventually gives us a stone that we'll eventually need in order to open the final world where Death Toll, the ruler of evil, is. So just as we get started with world two, I guess when when you give us a few words, high spirits. Thank you very much, there, Plexel and Axeman. Yes, I have a couple of things I can I can uh, throw in here. Uh, we had a ten dollar donation from Airplane that uh, just said com or uh, com comment goes to Runner's Choice. Oh, thank which you. Which was the uh, Star Magician, I believe, for Golden Sun 3 tomorrow morning. We also had Night Flyer, who gave a $25 donation. That, no message, but put that towards the Corrosive Poo fight for Blue Dragon later tonight. Um, and with that, we have a lot of incentives today, y'all. Uh, and uh, a lot of naming incentives coming up in the next couple of runs, but also a bonus Hero 3D run uh, coming up with our next run here with Doe Wolf runs Half Minute Hero, the second coming. You know, he normally has 30 seconds to beat the game, but what happens if he only gets three seconds? I mean, obviously something's gonna go, there's something's gotta give, right? But we're only at $25 out of 300. We really need some donations for that one. And again, we have a lot of naming incentives. There's th there's several for Half Minute Hero. There's several for Dragon Warrior Monsters 2. Right now, any donation will get you pretty much uh, any name that you want. All right, so um, kind of another inner neat thing about the pacing of this run too is that whenever you start a new world, the amount of experience you get per enemy goes up a fair bit. So that usually results in getting a per like one or two pretty fast level ups. Um, once you get started in the new world, so we just yeah. um, we just um, hit level four. Every time you get a level up too, you get a full heal, which is very important for um, for the speedrun routing in a couple places, along with uh, stat stat gains on attack and defense at specific points too. So here the um, <clears throat> the bottom layer we do ne we need, but the top layer um, is is not is not actually required. But X Man is. Um, taking out the uh, mud men coming from it primarily just to get some extra gems because um there's there's a couple fights um later on in world two where we just want a lot of gems and i mean r starting right here in fact too just because these uh grabby vines as i call them uh these are these these can be jerks sometimes just because they um they're, they're they're random as far as their movement and um to, and, and then they're vine patterns when they do yeah. them and then well, well ever the when the vines are extended to they are invincible so that fight can go really really fast if they if you get lucky and they and they just kind of cluster together and then die to a, a chain of fireballs but that, that was kind of a, like mid mid tier yeah. luck i would say it wasn't like horrible but it certainly could have been faster we also had some good and bad luck earlier in the swamp um good luck one of the um one of the first plants kind of moved in our way and we were able to kind of get an early kill there that to um speed things up but the plants on the other side that was going to hit with the fireball to open that um layer uh, remotely they kind of moved away and we didn't get enough gems to kind of like get some extra shots so oh, but that's a big gem oh, i wanted it 
Yeah, when it, um, I guess we haven't really talked too much about the poking mechanic in this game too, which he's doing right now, and like it was kind of the main way he did damage to the first boss. So if you hold the L or R buttons, um, you will kind of strafe in place, well, or you'll just strafe where you'll where you move without changing directions, and you'll have your sword extended out while you're doing that, and you can actually poke enemies with the sword to do. Um, at this point, just one damage per poke, but it adds up really fast because it's just continuous. And while, while you're doing the poking too, if there's gems that you're lined up with, you'll pull them towards you through telekinesis. So if, the, if, if you kill enemies, like in this case, over the lava pits or something, uh, if, you want, if you want to pick up their gem drops, you can do that using the, uh, the magnet effect of the poke. So here, just yeah, just taking out these firemen to, because uh, because um, when when you seal it, or when you kill all the enemies to kind of finish a layer off, if you leave and come back, it'll still be there. But if you have not killed all the enemies, it'll reset completely. So that's why it's important to uh, when we're going for kind of early early kills like that, that we just verify that the layer pops before we leave the screen. I need the gems. I did so I went out of. The this game isn't really too heavy with um, what we call RNG in speedrunner lingo, which just means random elements. But uh, there's a couple, there's a couple points where there is some meaningful randomness, and like that fight right there can be a little bad sometimes, just because the teleporting lizards can only be damaged when they're visible completely, and then the directions they teleport in are random. Some of the fights, it's not too meaningful because you've got a lot of space to work with and can just follow them around and kill them as soon as they finish teleporting. But for that one, because of just the, the the layout of the room makes it so that if you if multiple of them are alive at once, they can get away from you. All right, so the fireball spell has been serving us pretty well for the first uh, almost 20 minutes of the game, but we're about to get a really really big upgrade. Nice, um, with, with nice, with some nice drops there. Once we um, <clears throat> once we finish sealing this layer here, yeah, those little gems are worth one, and the the medium ones are five, and the big ones are ten. So we really need those big ones. That's gonna help us turn around because we've been sort of uh, I had sort of a mediocre first floor there. Yeah, so one of the things we can seal on we can release too are these fairies, I guess, for lack of a better term, that live in these blue jewels and. Pretty much all of the fairies will give you give you something when you talk to them, uh, and, and also options to fast travel back to town. Uh, some nice snipes there, and this fairy gives us the light arrow spell, which um, which for 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 speedrun purposes is basically the best spell in the game. It, it costs eight gems, which isn't really that much. Um, you get f it goes in four directions, and you can get multiple hits um, if you, if you have good right setups for it too. So this is the. Uh, spell we're going to be using for the basically up until the final boss. Yeah, no, X-Man got 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 a, I think at least one early kill too when he was um, on the left platform cuz uh, just these li these lizards take a while and I think I think both of these layers you have to kill the previous lizard before the next one will spawn. So every one that we can kill early makes a difference as far as uh, just speeding up getting through. We can wait here. The the layer on the left there is one that spawns the enemies sort of uh, not real quickly, but they spawn uh, all at once. And so as long as we it's on the screen, uh, it spawns the layers. There are some layers that are also proximity spawning, but those are always just single spawning. Uh, the proximity ones, you have to actually be close to it before it spawns. Most of them, as long as they're on screen. And so I'm actually tweaking my movement at times to kind of get the layers to appear on screen just because there's more uh, horizontal space and then vertical space. Yeah, and stuff like that is just why the skill ceiling for this run is so high too, just because there's so many micro optimizations that shave just a few seconds here and there off of individual, um, individual rounds of combat, but that all adds up over the course of about an hour and 40 minutes or so. There's also a lot of improvisation. Like you've got to figure out um, the best way to deal with kind of the, the luck that you've gotten. Um, and since it is, uh, you know, an hour 45 minutes or hour 40 minutes, if, if, so if I get a good clean run and not die here. <laughs> okay. All right. 
there. Yeah, I mean, with, with yeah, still still no armor, so he, he was one hit away from death there, and definitely wanted to uh, make sure that didn't happen. These and alligators opti are optim optim awesome. Optimally, you don't have to do that fight at all that way, too, because optimally you get enough gem drops in the, at the start of the swamp to kill all of those uh, plants um, remotely, and then you just walk up and touch the lair, and it's over. So I heard you needed some gems. Oh, yeah? I thought I'd drop in real quick and let you know that we had an $80 anonymous donation that says, take these 80 gems. They sound like they'll be helpful. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So put the dream rod to use there. And then um, as we travel throughout the world um, of, I'm blanking on what the Frylia, I think is the, the name the of Freelian the world. The kingdom or something the, like that. the name yeah. of the world this is in. Um, Pretty much every world has some kind of direct connection to Dr. Leo, the inventor, usually as far as like a, uh, a, pet, a former pet of uh, Dr. Leo's living there. And in this case, um, it, well, it, it, uh, it, it was um, Turbo the dog who uh, passed away prior to the start of the game, but um, his ghost is giving us some advice on how to keep going. Because basically, um, after we finished the uh, fire shrine, the second of the um, three shrines in Greenwood, um, we'd, we'd have been stuck if we'd have tried to keep going because these rafts won't let us cross them unless they know that we have the approval of, uh, Gre of Greenwood. And the way we do that is by getting the leaves of Greenwood from Turbo. We don't, even, we don't actually have to equip them, too. We just have to have them, and then the rafts let us cross. So this, so this, this section of the light shrine here is, is where all those gem drops that uh, X-Man was going for earlier really come in. Um, or not getting. <laughs> yeah, I like to call this the shooting gallery, too, just because there's um, just like four, I think like four different layers that um, we're fighting at the same time. And um, if we have enough gems, we can just kind of indiscriminately shoot light arrows to mow down all the uh, lizards and firemen. Unfortunately, our gem drops weren't real good there. Like, we got no big ones at all. Mm -hmm. There's actually two chests you can find in the fire shrine that just have gems in them, but uh, if you're trying to go really, really fast, you, you skip those and, then just, and just hope to get lucky with the drops from the enemies you have to fight. Yeah, it might have been worth it in this case because, I yeah, we got... This, this is a really, really beginner-friendly speed game, too, for RPGs, but between not really being super long, but there's just a lot of extra things you can do to make uh, make various parts of the run easier. And like one of them, some of them just involve picking up chests that have gems in them so that you can, uh, you don't have to be quite as um, conservative with where you use magic. Yeah, and I'm wishing I would have picked up one of them because we're, uh, we're low on gems. Because mm -hmm. yeah, because because we need to, we need some gems left over at the end of this world for the start of the next one and in a couple places too, so we can't just use all of them. I mean, I've got backup strats for everything, but yeah, mm -hmm. it slows things down. Okay, yeah, like so that. X Man's that doing is... a kind of a neat trick right now too with trying to with the way he was moving while doing that fight was wow, nice. That's what you want to see. Yeah, it was he was every time he kind of touched the upper left corner of those four boxes around the lair that was loading a lizard off screen, and with the right timing, you can uh, shoot an arrow and just kill all of them before they teleport, and it's really really fast. All right, so um. In addition to the Soul of Magician, which is the blue orb rotating around um, the Soul Blazer Ever Hate, um, there's other companion souls you can find throughout the game too that give you various um, various effects. Uh, the one you can find in this world, I think, is called the Soul of Light. It was actually, he actually walked right past it on, yeah. on his he way to, to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to get the leaves of Greenwood. But yeah, you have like at least a 15, 20 second, I think, uh, cutscene just talking to the mole to uh, to get the soul. But if you get that. There's a, you can see where you're going down here. Basically, there's a light effect around the soul, but if you've, if you've put in the practice, it's not really that, uh, that bad to skip it. All right, so we're almost, we're coming up on the end of world two here, which is also actually the hardest boss in the whole game. Uh, we have to fight three lion head statues. And then, um, both for, um, both for le being able to leave here without death warping and losing our gems, and then for a revisit we have to do later in the game, x -Man is doing the fight to, uh, to open up the um, warp tile back to the Master's Shrine. All right, so again, the, li the lion heads are three, kind of three bosses in one. 
Um, they, they all have different uh, move patterns and attacks based on their color, and um, there's all of this can be manipulated by, uh, by the Soul Blazer's movement. Um, so there's no randomness to this, but this is ver but some of the movement you need to do to bait the statues the right way is very precise. And um, if, it's, if you uh, mess up, it's you can die pretty fast. Yeah, I used to kind of gradually move to the right to keep the statue from running him over, and we <laughs> and that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a big breath. Yeah, always a relief to be past uh, the lion heads. Because again, that's one of those things where it doesn't really look that um, that hard watching watching somebody that knows what they're doing. But uh, if you um, if you mess up your movement to to manipulate the the what the statues do and lose control of them, they will they will kill you very very quickly, like in like three or four hits, I think, um, if you have no armor. So we weren't super clean in the light shrine, but our gem count is recovered. Um, this is like pretty good. We're, this is like everything I could ask for for the next area. All right, so we just need to do a quick pop back to town to get the next stone from uh, from um, from the uh, guardian of the woods, and then um, and we'll be on to the next world. So why don't we have a couple uh, couple words from high spirits? Well, I don't have any more gems for you, unfortunately, oh. but I do have a lot of donations. Wow. So let's uh, let's try to get some of these. Let's start off though with a six hundred dollar anonymous donation. Thank wow. you very much. That one went towards Vegeta. Fight Vegeta for Dragon Ball Z. So ooh, that could be spicy. We got a one hundred dollar donation from Red Claw Claw or Red Magus Claw. Uh, Red Magus Clawmas. There we go. I got it. <laughs> Great to see another RPG limit break. Good to see one of my favorite runners, Plexel, on commentary for one of the games I always wanted as a kid. Oh, Good luck you. to the oh. Axemen on the run. Thank you. Uh, we got a 100, another $100 donation from Perfectly Cromulent that says Quintet Collection on Switch, please. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Also, with that $100 donation, you might even have a chance to win that uh, Steam Deck, so maybe Quintet Collection on Steam Deck? Um... We had a $25 donation from One Free Fits that said, I love watching RPG Limit Break and donating to a good cause. And then a $10 donation from Le French Restream. <laughs> Thank you. Merci beaucoup. That says, hello, our first donation is to rename Matt as LPTI PTI for Golden Sun Dark Sun. <laughs> That's a little pun about our runner. Le Petit Petit is the opposite <laughs> for Le Grand Grand. Le Grand Grand, yeah. <laughs> Good luck, LGG. Have a nice RPG limit break. There's also a French version of that, but unfortunately, I feel like I would do a big disservice if I tried that. So I think okay. uh, I think I'll pass on that one. But appreciate that. All right. So getting back to the run. So this is so the, so Saint L's the third world is the longest in the run. This is there's just it has the highest number of dungeon type areas we have to go to. And then for uh, South Erta, the first one here, this is where. Having some gems left over after World 2 was so important, just because there were a lot of those black clam enemies uh, that X-Man had to fight. And um, if you if you fight those with your sword, it is so, so, so yeah, slow. they're very tanky. Yeah, and you, but you can kill them with one well-positioned light arrow. And, and sometimes, I, I think I saw X-Man actually get the four and one, too, which is pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty cool. As far as with good setups, you can get multiple in one shot, too. So yeah, it was a, it was a nice yeah. Thetherita, but it's... It's 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 a pretty intense part of the run when you don't have any armor still cuz yeah there was a, there was an armor upgrade we could have gotten in world 2 called the ice armor which uh, in addition to two defense also lets you walk on um, heated tiles without taking damage and uh, ha having that helps on Sotherta a fair bit too but uh, but anyway so we just got finally got some armor the bubble armor which is actually required in order to finish St. Els but since uh, we have one more layer on, a, on kind of a previously inaccessible part of Sotherita, Um and X-Man's going to be doing a Death Warp afterwards. Um, he, he isn't actually putting it on yet, but that'll be going on soon. And he was doing some really kind of a, some really subtle optimization with his health right there too, as far as yeah. intentionally, t well, taking some intentional damage from drowning underwater, and then touching some of the. Uh, Donkey Kong enemies uh, as they uh, as they spawn too to get exactly one health so that one hit from this killer bubble here will uh, get 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 an optimal death warp. 
Yeah, you gotta watch out for those fish bubbles. They, uh, they actually hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then kind of just the, the, the flow of um, St. L's is that um, every, every dungeon area has a mermaid statue in it that when you release it will make one of these barriers in the uh, kind of main underwater section disappear. So the first one um, will let us go to Rockbird, which is a Shoals Island over to the east. Yeah, Rockbird is a uh, Rockbird is a little more fun. It's it's uh, we don't need to we don't need to worry about our RNG as much, and uh, we we've got we put we put on our armor, um, and so for the first time we actually have armor, and we're not going to take a whole lot of damage compared to before because um, we've, we've got this armor. We do have to you know beat these fairly annoying like um, Man of jellies, Wars or yeah, something, something yeah. like that. Ooh, but we get the big gems anyway. I love the music in St. L's too. Like I just love how yeah. kind of soothing the uh, underwater theme is, and then just how kind of hype and intense the uh, island themes are. I mean, every music is so hype and it's like, yeah. There's kind of yeah, the music of this game is just amazing. It's one of the one of the high points of speedrunning it. Uh, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a safety here. I'm gonna beat an, a layer that you wouldn't normally have to beat, and uh, we're gonna we'll be able to get a uh, medical herb out of it. And that medical herb will be useful if we run into some health issues in one of the other islands here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next island after this one. Definitely hoping to get some good. Well, actually, I guess the gems don't really matter quite that much here because no. uh, yeah, we're doing the we don't need too many. Goods, but yeah. We after, after that, though, we would definitely want some really good gem drops. Yeah, I wish I would have got those gem drops, you know, in the next section. Oh, man, this is like... <laughs> it's just... <laughs> we better not be using yeah. up all our gem luck here. So I believe this is the... Yeah, this is the optional one here. There's... There's a chest that has gems and a chest that has a medical herb, and the medical herb is just kind of, it's a fairly minor detour that um, can come in very handy on Durian, the next island. There's been some chat in RPG Limit Break Discord a few times about, I guess, a kind of a fruit or something called a durian, but uh, yes. every time that comes up, I always think about this game <laughs> instead of fruits. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, you could like pick it and cook it up in the um, in Breath of the Wild. That was it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's a real fruit. I'm pretty sure. I, mm -hmm. I think I see it at the store. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> All so, right. So we got the second. Sorry, do you want? Oh to yeah, something? yeah. So we kept. Uh, we're gonna take another warp here, and uh, now we've got armor. It's a little harder to do, but since we're able to grind our HP down so low, like it's not too bad to actually do that. Other times I'll be unequipping my armor just so we can, you know, get to that death warp faster. Yeah, that's another that's a risk reward thing when you're I mean, as far as going fast in this game too is trying to optimize your death warps but also not put yourself in like so much risk that you might um, you might die before you want to. Yeah, yeah. In most cases in most cases if that happens that's a very big time loss. Yeah, I mean, you get to keep, you know, whatever you had, but you've got to redo the section. You'll have to get, work your way back from the master's lair or the master's uh, shrine there. So our next area is Durian, a undersea volcano or volcano, something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, it's it's a volcano and it's uh, it's fiery. Yeah, there's a companion soul you could find somewhere here that um, lets you pr that protects you from the falling uh, magma at Durian, but um, it's not required, so we're skipping it. Ooh. Ooh okay, we did not there. lose all our gems, all our uh, gem luck. It is still still in there. Yeah, there's some somewhat recently discovered um, strats for Durian that um, can cut down on the on the amount of gems that you actually need there too. So that's yeah. That's it's nice. also faster, and so you know I'm gonna do it. But like we we've got so many gems here. Like this is uh, this is this is more than usual. Mm -hmm. 
but you know your gem luck kind of goes up and down and you've got to you know you've got to deal with what you've got and just because you've got a lot of them you want to make sure not to kind of get too too overexcited because it can turn the other way I'm just glad that all of the lairs that have these tornado jerk birds and them only have like one or two of them. <laughs> yeah. Too, so you don't have to uh, ever really fight. All right, that and that is them. like all the gems we need for for durian. Mm -hmm. So again, these fall these falling uh, magma balls here are random as far as the uh, pattern for them. I mean, it's a it's a big part of why it's nice to have that medical herb um, for safety in a marathon setting like this too, just because you can end up taking damage just purely because of bad luck with the magma balls and. Also, um, something that we um, were intended to get earlier, too, was the mermaid tiers, which we could have gotten from the side of the mermaid house where we got the bubble armor. And then what we're supposed to do is get to the top of the, of the volcano here and then use the mermaid tiers to shut, to kind of turn, cool all of the lava that's on the ground. And... Um, and that's kind of intended to be required to get to the lair where the next mermaid statue is. But, I mean, if you um, if you have enough health and or a medical herb, you can just take all the damage across the lava and, and not need the mermaid tears. And then skipping that speeds up um, a later visit we're going to be doing here, too. We got a little unlucky on the, on the uh, fireballs hitting us, and so I'm going to take advantage of that medical herb here. Mm -hmm. So just like with um, Sotherta, there's some of these black clams that are really easy and fast to kill with the light arrow and very, very slow and difficult with the sword. So there's some light arrows here. And this is where that kind of newer route, I believe, by, developed by a German runner named Namefaker comes in, too, where he, he's um, kind of fighting the clams and the uh, Donkey Kongs at the same time so that he's he, he doesn't need as many light arrows to kill all of them. Yeah, the, the old route would kill the... Um, we would take out the little clam enemies from the top with our arrows. Um, but now, if we use a little bit of health to go through there and, and still, like... We're going to need this herb here. Yeah, there's an alternative route where you loop around at the bottom of that part of the volcano and you don't need as much health, but having the medical herb here might as well just use it. Like, I still don't think you'd have you'd have enough to make it from the bottom either at that point. Although, could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I don't... I'm uh, usually focused... Because it's, it's a big time loss to take that path around the bottom, so mm -hmm. I, I haven't been practicing it's I mean, I, would, it's I feel like it's probably slower to do that than to get the medical herb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The medical herb doesn't take too much time, especially, um, you know, I did that trick where I spawned the bird. You can spawn the bird and, and take it out, and yeah. So... Um, Safety here paying off with that medical herb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in the practice run that he did before 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 this, he didn't end up needing it at all because he ended up oh. having totally full health going into the uh, damage boost section. You, you have to release a bunch of NPCs here, and each of them gives you two health back. So you get you know some some back if, if even if you go down, and you don't need your full health. But we were a little short. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're about to get a really cool item here from uh, one of, from, I, I guess Leo was pretty diverse in his uh, pet choices, that he has a pet <laughs> dolphin in addition to a pet dog, um, and, so, and then everything, but um, Lou, Lou the dolphin gives us Thunder Ring, which is a really cool item that sadly is only going to be useful once, but it's, but we need, it is required in order to uh, release the next mermaid statue, so even though Lou talks a lot, we do uh, pick up the Thunder Ring. And I had pre-equipped it before, but since oh. I had to move the cursor for my medical herb, uh, we had to go back to the menu again. Uh, now we're all set. Mm -hmm. And since we opened up this passageway, we've got a little bit of a shortcut here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing too. I mean, yeah, some of the some of the monster layers that you can that you seal just make changes to the terrain in the area that in a lot of cases are just meant to be shortcuts, like if you die and need to walk back or something. And mo a lot of those will be skipping, but there's a few here and there that actually save time and are worth doing it. Nice. So here, X-Men kind of taking, it, taking advantage of just the fact that when you swing your sword, the, the sword kind of lingers a bit on the Soul Blazer's right side, and uh, for really tanky enemies like these crabs, um, you can, but just with the right rhythm, you can just 
get the damage to accumulate a lot yeah. more efficiently. You get sort of a stun effect, and if you really hammer the your slash button on uh, it, and uh, you can you can get a you can get it stun the stun effect pretty good. All right, so and then this is Blaster, the Island of Rain, and then the reason we need the Thunder Ring is to kill these metal monkeys here, which are which do not take damage from any weapons that we have access to at this point other than the Thunder Ring. But when we have the Thunder Ring equipped, if we touch one of these pyramids here, I believe the Baster will send down Thunder to um, to to kill the monkeys. To smite the monkeys. Yes. Yep. The evil metal monkeys. <laughs> I'm sure you can think of some sort of uh, reason why these metal monkeys are here. <laughs> there were also some metal monkeys on Durian that we kind of just walked by. Uh, that's armor off. So we're unequipping our armor here uh, so that we can get this warp a little faster. Because uh, all we've really got here to, to take the damage from is that, that fish bubble. And with the armor on, we don't take much from it. So. Okay, finally, our yeah. last statue, and it's the ghost ship. And then our uh, undersea adventures will yeah. come to an end. We could probably squeeze in a few donations or something while we're walking to the ghost ship, but I'll just say that on his way to the ghost ship, X-Men is going to be picking up an item called the Power Bracelet, which is one of the, it's one of the best items in the game because it just flat out doubles the amount of damage you do with your sword, either by swinging or poking, and you don't even have to fight anything for it. You just open the chest and it's yours. So that's going to be equipped for a lot of the... Uh, remainder of the run but um yeah we could probably squeeze in maybe like two or three donations or so while we're uh, walking to the ghost ship you know i got a something here for you quickly we got a ten dollar donation from hulk oh hi hulk that says rpg limit break hype and then we got a 100 dollar donation from llk uh my second favorite thing yeah my second favorite thing in RPGs is when the hero kills godlike <laughs> entities that have a million details in their character design using a sword that has a dubiously translated name. And, there's, <laughs> and then there's probably a friendly goddess or magic spell or something. <laughs> and the power of friendship? Don't forget the power of friendship. Of and then a banger song plays over the credits. <laughs> My first favorite thing about RPGs? The speedrunning community. Yeah. Heck yeah! So uh, what are some upcoming incentives? Let's get every single one met. Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Yeah, I think so, okay. All right, so we have Skullmaster, the boss of St. Els here. This is not quite as hard as the uh, stone um, heads, but you can still die very fast if you um, if you make contact with the skull. But uh, yeah, but yeah, the, um, as, as, yeah, just, the, the idea there was just to, because the, the hands, as I understand it, have a bit of randomness as far as how yeah. much health they have, and those are really the main threat, because you can avoid the skull's fireballs really easily if you just know which kind of row of uh, tiles to stand yeah. on. And you just it is it. pretty precise, and you do have to, um, you have to kind of like move back. If you move back all the way, you'll get hit by his fireballs, which also do a lot of damage. So it's kind of the one, a fight that looked maybe a little easier than it is, because uh, a pretty small error can kill you pretty fast. Uh, that describes a lot of things. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, casually, the game is not as hard because you'll get more levels, you'll get more armor, um, things like that, and it'll, it, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, so with um, Skullmaster defeated, we released the Mermaid Queen, who um, gives us the blue stone, which lets us move on to the Mountain of Souls, the next world. So apparently the blue stone has a special effect where uh, they, the, it made the queen put Lou in jail, which explains why Lou the dolphin uh, was was in jail. And uh, but we're not, we're just gonna ignore the fact that like they said, if you have an evil heart and hold the see the stone or something, it, you uh, do bad things. And the, the queen gets to stay on her throne. <laughs> we're very forgiving. I, yeah. I guess you know we're that kind of uh, of master or disciple. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these towns have some kind of neat lore to, behind them, too, if you actually release and talk to all of the NPCs, too. Like, this pla for this place, the Mountain of Souls, the people that live here are mostly kind of a dwarf-like creature. 
And you, and you, if you, and that you find out if you talk to enough of them that they actually have very short lifespans, like they only live like a few years or something like that, and um, kind of fit fit all of the all of um, their living into a short time. But um, yeah, so then we have. Um, I guess I'm blanking on what the name of this specific area is here. The but, Mountain of Thole. Yeah, the first, the first uh, part of the mountain, yeah. North Slope. North Slope, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is Aurora Ridge. Yeah, so this yeah. game has some really nice background art, too, especially for how early of a SNES game it was, too. It only came out in 92. But yeah, this is where the, um, the the way we handle combat is about to change a little bit, too, because uh, th this set of chests here isn't actually required at all, but it's pretty fast. And in addition to another medical herb, which we will eventually need later, we are getting uh, another armor upgrade called the Magic Armor, which um, actually halves the amount of gems that you need for magic. And just because we're still using the Sword of Life, which is the sword we got at the very start of the game, um, the, and and just because of how how a lot of the enemies here work as far as their movement patterns, using light arrows is just so 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 much faster than uh, than your sword. And being able to use them for four gems instead of eight is really significant. Yeah, I mean we get a we get a defense bonus, which is nice. Um, so we can you know tank even more damage as well as uh, getting twice as much magic, which is really good on a lot of these enemies. And we have to fight some yetis here. No relation, of course, to our friendly um, beef jerky loving t-shirt uh, supplier, too. So again, uh, multitasking on those layers. The, the, these like ice mice, the ice mice in the snow, they like, uh, as soon as you touch them or slash them or something, they come out of the snow and then they start, um, if they're in the snow, they just go in one direction. So I kind of touched them to kind of get them uh, aggroed and they came at me while I was taking care of the Yetis. So a lot of tech and kind of like getting optimal uh, routes on these. Mm -hmm. This is a case too, where I mean, we're, we need to go back to town and we could do a death warp to get there, but because a death warp under normal circumstances takes away all your gems and we need gems for combat, it works out better to just release that um, jewel fairy there to fast travel us back here without taking our gems. Yeah, and it didn't take much time at all because we were able to, you know, multitask it along with mm -hmm. the uh, the layer that we needed to get the, the boy who had our mushroom shoes we need here. And, the re and then the reason for that too is that um, normally the, the icy uh, parts of uh, the um, Aurora Ridge area, when you step on them, you just slide in one direction until you hit a, um, a wall or a rock or something. And in order to actually be able to freely walk, you have to get the mushroom shoes, which in addition to being stylish, have snail goo on them, which uh, lets you uh, freely walk on ice. It would be pretty, pretty sweet if there was a way to skip this, because yeah. this is not a short uh, fetch quest, but unfortunately it is even like the task at this point isn't able, isn't able to uh, get around eating the mushroom shoes. So we have to release some extra people uh, in this area, along with some of the other areas, but particularly this one because the, uh, the cave, the area, is, it's a cave, and uh, we, when we open, when we release one of our NPCs, it also um, opens up part of the cave, and we need um, some of some of that cave. We need that cave opened up in order to reach the people that we need to talk to. So, some of these people, we don't, they don't have anything to say or give to us, but they will uh, open up the path that we need to get to the people that do. This there kind of seems like it's a proximity one or something, but it's actually a timer, and it's a really, really slow timer. Yeah. So this is an amazing gem count for here. Um, so as long as I can, like, not miss too many shots, like, we're in great shape for this act. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we get to fight some of these teleporting wizards or vampires or whatever they are, and these, um, you, 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 you want light arrows for these, because if you get too close to one of them, they become invincible and teleport, and then you have to chase them down, and they, and it's random and annoying, but if you just kill them with the light arrows before getting close enough to aggro them, then it's, then it's a lot faster. 
So these bats are also pretty annoying because they, they go around, so they come out of the lair, and like, like every enemy, they're invincible when they first come out. Um, and then they start flying around you, which is not so convenient uh, for our arrow here, unless we can kind of get it in the right place at the right time. Yeah, without the rotation of the Soul of Magician works, you can kind of get into a nice loop, basically where you're just, the bats are spawning and then you're shooting kind of in the same position of the, of the arc every time. Now yeah, X-Man also doing a kind of a neat, a neat technique here where um, if you press the D-pad while you're not actually moving, that will kind of detach the Soul of Magician and float, have it float away. You can either just kind of walk into a wall to set that up, or you can press the D-pad while you're swinging your sword, and he was doing that to uh, get his uh, Magician Soul into a uh, more favorable spot. So another boy, uh, see, we call this Grandpa, Grandpa Logs, because he's got all the logs. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of grandpas and grandmas in this town. Yeah. So, so almost like about half-ish or so the way through the game, we're finally getting another sword after uh, using the Sword of Life for quite a while. Uh, this, this is the Lucky Blade, which um, is it does end up actually being required to, uh, to progress the story, but um, for the time being, we're actually just equipping it for its secondary effect, which is that it doubles our odds of getting bigger gem drops. A mecha another mechanic that um, starts to matter a little bit too is that every um, sword in the game has a minimum level that you have to be in order to actually swing it. Uh, be that being 15 in this case for the Lucky Blade, which we aren't yet. We're only level 11. Yeah. But um, you can. You the, the game doesn't stop you from equipping the sword even if you can't swing it. And if you do that, you get you still get the secondary effect if there is one. And you can also poke with it by holding the L or R buttons, which is something that's going to matter a lot in the next world after this one. But yeah, again, here we're just doing it for to boost our uh, gem drops because we're pretty much exclusively using magic to fight. And then, yeah. Holding the sword out with the LR buttons will also pull gems into you through a telekinesis effect. Which is really, and well, it is kind of fun, funny though that this, the size of the gem affects how fast they pull towards you <laughs> yeah. too. Like the really big ones, if you're so far away, they might even despawn before they touch, before you touch them. They despawn pretty quick. It, it might be, you know, to avoid some like limitations of like hardware processing, but still, um, you gotta get those gems when they come. Almost done with this area. Um, this is uh, the ice uh, ice area, Lanol, um, mm. that we need the, yeah, so this is the area we need the mushroom shoes. Uh, this grandpa opens up the path to Loon, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, an underground, underground lake. lake. Yeah, but but yeah. Uh, for reasons I don't remember, you have to have the lucky blade in order to get, get Yeah, the like, I don't think there's any reason. I think the grandpa just tells you, like, you know, uh, you, you don't, you, you need the lucky blade to come in here. Uh, but, so we need the Lucky Blade, even if we didn't, you know, necessarily want to get it to help things out. So uh, we've got our Lucky Blade. I just want to make sure I got that power bracelet equipped, because it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. It's a very easy mistake to make, especially when you're new to the run, too, after you use the mushroom shoes to just forget to switch back to the power bracelet. It's a mistake you don't really notice very easily, too, because you're mostly using magic, which isn't affected by the power bracelet. And uh, we're going to have a bit of a, uh, of a DPS uh, uh, battle of uh, attrition against the boss here. So we need, uh, we need to make sure we've got that. And this is where um, just knowing how many, because the, the number of monsters in each layer is perfectly consistent, and just knowing how many there are and um, counting as you fight to... Um, Especially on these teleporting wizard layers is pretty important for going fast. Because again, if you if you get too close to one of the uh, wizards, they will teleport and become invincible while doing so. Yeah, yeah, the wizards are are one of the more annoying enemies. You really need to use your magic in order to do them efficiently. All right, so we're kind of in the final stretch of uh, Loon on our way to uh, the boss. This is a little interesting of an area, too, in that you actually don't have to seal any layers in order to open the door to the boss. So we're just going straight in there. We 
a ceiling layer in her way. All right, so this is Poseidon, although in the Japanese version it was Medusa instead. Yeah, Medusa was wearing about the same outfit that Poseidon's wearing now, which is not quite enough. Didn't quite fly in 1992, yeah. So um, yeah, so we're just poking Poseidon with the uh, with the power bracelet to do two damage per hit, and uh, I mean as long as we as long as we're just not taking um, unnecessary hits, um, it, this is very very easy. There we go. And yeah, we did need to avoid, you know, one hit there, uh, which you can do on the on the pass on the the left and the right position. You can do it by moving left or, and kind of coming in as he comes down. Uh, so you can you know you can deal with a little bit of health loss. If you're too low, then you're gonna have some trouble. Yeah. So we released um, Gnome the Snail, who's uh, er earlier actually who's one another one of Leo's pets, and then there we released the Mountain King, who we need to release in order to get into where Gnome is. But we're not quite done here yet though, just because uh, even though we could at this point get the stone and move on to. Uh, to the next world. Um, there's some other stuff we have, we're going to eventually have to do in order to be able to get to the final boss and defeat it. And it's just a lot more efficient to just get that out of the way right now. So it just, so it just boils down to having to clear out a bunch more uh, layers of various types in order to kind of fully open up all of the uh, bridges on this area and then release two more grandmas. Probably fit in a few more donations or so while we're finishing this up. So yeah, again, just taking care of all of these layers, releasing the two grandmas, and then uh, eventually death warping back to town to get the stone. So high spirits, take it away. Sure. Let's start with, right now, a $100 donation from French Toast. It says, in tribute to the Hero 3D run incentive, I'm going to write a three-second donation comment starting. Now, thank you all so very much for this event. Nami is awesome. You're all doing great. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was three seconds. Oh, uh, that's good. Um, and uh, LLK also asked something earlier about incentives. Well, we have one coming up, and we need help finishing it, everyone. It's th the Hero 3D run coming up. Next, with Doe Wolf. It's three seconds. <laughs> But we're only at $130 out of 300. I know that's a lot of threes, but we need a lot more threes. So let's try to get that one. And uh, yeah, LLK, real quick, want to give a special thanks to her. She's a longtime contributor to GDQ Marathons and the designer of our amazing promo, ba promo banners, badges, and emotes. So make sure to check out her work at jazaboo.com. That's J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O dot com. So our, uh, our NPC here that gives us the stone and lets us move to the next world is Gnome. Um, it wasn't the one that released from the boss. That was the king. Uh, but we needed to release the, um, the king before talking to Gnome. Otherwise, the jail is closed. Um, and Gnome is apparently a pretty big snail. Um, and it was all, she was also, uh, he, she, was Dr. Leo's pet. And so, you know, Dr. Leo, pet dolphin, pet giant snail. Pet dog at some point. And, and a dog, yeah. yeah. We're not, and we're not done yet, by the way, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing about Gnome, Gnome was a snail, but apparently Gnome was able to run away from um, this, the, the, the soldiers that were kidnapping Dr. Leo. So, um, somehow, you know, a fairly mobile snail. <laughs> so speaking of Dr. Leo, now we're in Leo's lab, lab which um, in addition to having some really banger music here, is, is a pretty big difficulty spike in the speed run. And that all comes down to that mechanic I mentioned where there's a level requirement for um, swinging each kind of sword. Um, we're at, right, right now, we're just doing a kind of a short fetch quest to get a, um, a sword called the Zantetsu sword, which is uh, metal slashing in uh, Japanese. And that's a requirement in order to be able to kill metal enemies. Like, there were some metal enemies in Leo's painting much earlier on that we just avoided, and then there were metal monkeys in, uh, in uh, St. Els. But then there's a bunch of kind of helicopter robots and uh, 
robot mice that are made of metal in Leo's basement that only take damage from the Zontetsu sword. Yeah. And because we're not level 16 yet, the only way we can um, we can do it is by poking, and because poking just does a lot less damage than actually swinging, and also just because of how just we're, us being under leveled to a lot of the fights here are pretty uh, pretty precise and uh, intense too. And and in addition to that too. Um, X-Man skipped the ice armor upgrade in uh, World 2, which um, if you had that, that would come in really handy here because there's some heated tiles in the base second floor of, uh, of, uh, of the lab here that um, if you had the ice armor, they would they, uh, you wouldn't take damage from them. But because we don't have that, we have to uh, kind of budget health really carefully and then also take advantage of both uh, medical herbs and level ups too, which give you full heal in order to get totally through it without ever uh, running out of health. All right, pretty deep, pretty clean first floor. Now we're going into the second floor, which is where the aforementioned heated tiles are. So we're taking this path, which kind of gets us through with the least number of hits. Then we have a pretty touchy fight coming up shortly, too, with some uh, robot mice. Um, the, as, as you saw from the last fight that um, he did, um, the, uh, the mice just kind of follow the corners of uh, the room that they're in. And... Um, we really don't want them to get away, basically, because even though there's only three of them, just this is just the nature of the map here makes it so that um, killing them just with the poke damage before they kind of fully break away from you is pretty difficult. I mean, there are there are some nice backups though, like in particular yeah. that that um, bulldozer monster lair he unsealed there. If he stepped on that and released a soul, that would reset the uh, robot mice lair too, and that would end up being faster in most cases if you get it second try at least than waiting for them to, uh, the mice to come back to you. But, um, but yeah, it was fortunately not necessary. So we're gonna uh, do a little multitasking on these two layers as well. And we're also lucky we, we um, Got some of the enemies kind of to run away, and they're not getting in our way. And luckily, we've got a lot of gems to work yeah, with here. Yeah, those squeegee cleaners or whatever <laughs> Something they like are, that, yeah. uh, do not require the Zentetsu sword to kill, so you can actually use the light arrows on those. Yeah, the, the enemies that are metal and require Zentetsu also um, are immune to magic. Because that would be a pretty easy exploit if you could use magic to... Uh... Shoot. Damage those. And again, I, I need to make sure these guys don't get away. All right, so far so good. Fortunately, with that 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 mice fight there, if you kind of lose control a little bit, you can usually recover it, just because they do slow down a lot when they're turning. Yeah. And there's enough twists, there's enough turns on that platform that even if you kind of lose control of the on the on the left side, you can kill them on the right before they get away. So the downside is a death, um, a death uh, on this uh, section. Uh, after we use the medical herb, it's really punishing because we need a medical herb to kind of get through that section without like really spending a lot of time killing stuff. So um, it was fairly clean through yeah. here. Yeah, that was a, that was a really good basement too. Yeah. It's basically the uh, basically the hardest One part of the, of the run. Sections, it's, not, yeah. it's not like a boss fight. Okay, All right. next section. So now that we're um, now that we're level 15, we can actually swing the lucky blade, and then the um, the next two dungeon areas we're going to are model towns, which I I kind of like to say are Quintet's product placement for ActRaiser, <laughs> just because they just remind, the, just the look and feel of them just remind me so much of the towns in ActRaiser. But in these, um, we don't have to fight anything that requires the Zantetsu sword, so we're just either using the Lucky Blade or Light Arrows. Got all these Lilliputian knights and uh, archers here too. And They're just... not very big, but they do full damage. <laughs> We get some rocking horses we have to fight later too. It's just such a strange area. Oh, okay, you can come along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's trying. Yeah, the rock, rocking horse knights here. These are pretty easy. 
so the stun effect from our uh, our sword is is pretty nice. Yeah, can... combined with the power bracelet too for double damage. And we've still got our um, uh, we still got that uh, magic armor, so we're taking uh, a lot less. Uh, we're using half uh, half MP for magic, half uh, gems. So we only need four gems for each light arrow instead of eight. But if we're in a little bit, we're going to get an armor that is a big step up in defense, but it has uh, quite a bit. It, it has. Uh, it doesn't. It's not going to give us that that stun effect. So. Yeah, we just did, because we still have the lucky blade too that is doubling our chances to get larger gem drops too. I forget if we mentioned this too, but the odds of getting larger gem drops also just naturally go up as you progress through the game too. Like every time you start a new world, the odds go up more. Okay, I'm actually gonna have to take some safety gems here because I uh, am short on gems. I mean, a bunch of them dropped, and I didn't pick them up because I think the ones that I the ones that I did pick up normally you get enough, but uh, now we've got you know that that yeah. chest is right there. It's not and it, we just walk out instead of death warping too because we have to go into the second model town, which is right there, along with just not being f slow at all to just leave too through the shortcut. So the second model town is much much shorter than the first one, and that there's I believe only one layer that you actually have to seal in order to to move on here. It's a bit of a whopper too, because it's these six invisible catapults. Um, there's a, there's a companion soul you could find that lets you see invisible enemies in the towns, but um, it, you don't you don't need it in order to damage them. So just with knowing where the catapults are, you can yeah. use some. Luckily, light arrows. the light arrow is like its hitbox is so huge. As long as you kind of get an idea of like where you need to have your soul um, to fire those arrows, you kind of just shoot those off and. And these enemies, uh, those invisible catapult things are like so damaging. I didn't even bother unequipping my armor. I just <laughs> walked right onto them. And then in the, th and then we fight. We hit level 16 off the uh, fights in the model town, so that lets us actually use the kind of swing the Zantetsu sword now. And then we'll just see just how how much easier the uh, the robot enemies are when you can actually kind of fight them as intended. So this is a pretty minor detour to get the light armor that X-Man was mentioning earlier. Its secondary effect is one that's not relevant in the speedrun and that it makes you take uh, no damage from very weak enemies, but that's not something that's going to come up here. Yeah, it really only comes up in the randomizer uh, because I, I think some enemies in Act, uh, maybe like, it's like all enemies in Act 1 and 2 and then some enemies in 2 and 3. So by the time you get to, like, even Act 4, there's not really... Uh, by here, there's, like, nothing that it's really going to help you with. Uh oh I'm going to take the... Uh, take the safety? Take the, yeah, okay. because I, I took some extra damage from that spike. If you do it right, then they kind of all... They all like line up yeah. and there's kind of two different routes you can take for the very end of leo's lab one is where you uh, just move on basically instead of and then go directly to the bus and the other is where you kill those helicopters to open the warp tile and then every time you enter the master's lair you get a full heal so this this makes the next boss tindal extremely easy when you go in with full health at the cost of like maybe 10 to 15 seconds or so overall yeah and i'll just be i'm going to be able to just tank all of his hits and Boom. Yep. Tind yeah, Tindal gets really wild if um if 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 it actually moves away from the from that column as far as being able to like jump up, go out of bounds and teleport around through those orange uh, or yellow um tiles on yeah, the right and left but teleporter it, thing. But it's but it but it's it's movement AI is very easy to manipulate. I mean, so that's a common thing with a lot of the enemies actually. Is if you're um, either on the same vertical tile or one to the left, then uh, then they actually will not move uh, horizontally. And so we've been abusing that the whole way. Like you probably noticed in act one, like I, I was just standing right next to where the, 
the little goblins came out. They just stood there and let me poke them. Uh, and that continues throughout the game. And, you know, later enemies have ways to attack you still, but still, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very powerful manipulation that, you know, kind of makes it yeah. a lot easier. So, but, yeah, and, and then between, between that technique and also being able to kind of manipulate where Tyndall's fireballs go, you, if you're really, really good, you can no damage it. And that's the optimal route, basically, where you'd skip the warp tile and then just beat Tyndall without getting hit and then take a death warp to get back to town. Yeah, I mean, you can even take damage from Tyndall. It's just you're going to you're gonna get a full heal from um, releasing the, the doll at the end. And um, so you'll have to kind of, like, get through all your HP when you take that warp. But since we had the tile open, we were able to walk right out, and we've got uh, we got to keep our gems, which will be useful, and we still got our armor equipped, which is also kind of nice because we're these enemies are even stronger. We're up mm -hmm. to Act Six, which is Magrid Castle. Yeah, this is where the uh, just the over, the overarching story of the game kind of finally starts to pick up because uh, we had this whole pro prologue about um, King Magrid summoning a, a devil called Death Toll to uh, trade the souls of his subjects for money. And then um, then we we're just go we went around for a while to release the souls, but th the whole thing with King Magrid and Death Toll kind of went under the back burner until now, basically, when we're going into uh, Magrid's castle. And then right here, X-Man is doing kind of the closest thing you could really call a glitch in this game. Because, um, oh. again, you, there's a level requirement for each sword. We just picked up the spirit sword, which is required to damage these ghost enemies. And you need to be level 19 to swing the spirit sword. But um, if, when, when, when you, if you swing a sword that you can swing and then switch and then open the menu kind of mid-swing animation to um, switch to one that you can't, uh, then the rest of that swing will take on the properties of the new sword. So you're able to kind of use that to cheat the uh, the level requirement. And then a more advanced thing that he's doing on top of that too is so once he so once he sets up the sword glitch, he is also flicking in and out of the menu to reset the ghost's iframe so that he's able to optimally um, just completely kill one in one swing. And just because this game actually has different buttons for entering and exiting the venue, that's a lot harder than it sounds, too. Yeah. Because you have to use, you have to have a rhythm going between... Uh, yeah, X opens the venue and Y closes it. So it's kind of like X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. And yeah, if you uh, aren't fast enough or just maybe in the wrong spot, then it will... Uh, the enemy will kind of... Well, these ghosts kind of disappear and reappear. And it, so... It can be, and it also, it's taking time to go in and out of the menu. So it's kind of debatable whether that glitch actually saves time, but it's just so swag. I've got to do it in the marathon, you know? <laughs> yeah. We were picking up some invisible chests. There's a, I think the last companion soul in the game is one that lets you see invisible treasures and, and passages in Magrid Castle. But uh, like a lot of things, it's not required, so we skip it. Going for their strat here, of kind of manipulating the movement of these um, laser orbs, or just sniping them from afar with lighter arrows to move to save his gems. Um, and since we got that better armor, we've got higher defense, but we lost our um, our half our half gem uh, bonus. So we've got to use the full amount of gems in order to cast our magic now. So can I uh, come in with a few donations here then? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Well, I did have one person who uh, answered the call with Lone Weasel giving a $50 donation. I need more half minute hero. So let's make it happen. Shout outs to Nami for being amazing. And that put us at 180 out of $300 for that hero 3D run. Still need some help everyone. And uh, one other thing, earlier last week, we got a, a message from someone in the community who uh, about the passing of a friend. And we got a couple of donations in honor of them. Um, one being a $50 donation from Kazen that said, Our rest in peace, Mighty Blue. And a $50 donation from False Logic. Both of those going towards naming the Benjamin and Ma Mystic Quest uh, Mighty B. <laughs> so 
so we picked up a strange bottle earlier, which is a useful consumable uh, when we equip it and uh, take a, a warp here, we actually get to keep our gems instead of losing them. Yeah, there's there's an earlier point where you could theoretically do that for safety in uh, World Three, but uh, X Men's just doing it here for um for um for World Six in order to have some more gems going into the left tower. So, and then also, I'm um, earlier on he picked up a pretty well hidden item called the harp string, which is <laughs> which is I, I imagine stumps some people playing <laughs> this uh, for the first time too, just because it's not really super obvious where it is or that you actually need it. But uh, getting that lets us um, give it to this um, this bard here to uh, to play a lovely song, which is eventually going to be the credit song for the game too, um, that will entice this soldier to stop stepping on a key card that we need in order to progress. He says the the um, the the song has no name or no it has no words. But oh, um, which is ironic given that there is actually a vocal arrangement <laughs> of this song yeah. too called I think A Night Without a Lover. Yeah, yeah, A Night Without a Lover is the, the title. All right, so then when we go into the uh, West Tower of Magrid Castle, we have a lot of uh, out of fights with these knights that I like to call shredders because of their helmet and their purple capes. And then these chess knights too, which do move, they do move like chess knights should as far as uh, two, two, two in one direction and then one to the side. And then just, just because of you, because of how close quarters a lot of these layers are, you do have some opportunities to get early kills with light arrows, which is why we're using the strange bottle to keep your gems after the last uh, death warp comes in handy. You, you, you generally take a lot of damage in the first floor of the West Tower, too, so sometimes the upper floors can be a little scary because of how low your health is. But uh, fortunately, these, um, re these red shredders with the boomerangs are pretty easy to manipulate like a lot of the other enemies in the game. All right, we're a little low on gems again. We're not, uh, the, the shredders were not uh, being nice on their gem drops here. So um, I am going to slap on, go back to our, no, not that one, that one, and that one. Uh, we're gonna go back to our magic armor just to get some extra uh, magic ability here. Yeah, because um, being able to shoot the uh, knights through the through the jail bars here are, saves a ton of time over kind of what you're intended to do, which is to open all the gates and then fight them that way. So after all this time, we are finally getting to meet Dr. Leo and um, it's, it, it, we're taking a special route too because in order to get to the to the boss, we have to release Doctor Leo and then two soldiers that are uh, accompanying him. One was one we did a lot earlier, and then the other one is here too. But uh, if we did the second soldier and then Doctor Leo, Doctor Leo would have a lot more dialogue um, when you release him. So doing it in this way, even though it's a little slower for movement between the layers, ends up saving more time than that in uh, in cutscene text. Yeah, the, uh, the text is all printed out one letter at a time, and it's three frames per letter, which is kind of slow. Uh, the Japanese version actually comes out in one frame per letter, and it's in, you know, uh, the kana, which is phonetic, so there's, you know, like, generally fewer letters. But the, up the upside to that, though, even though the English version is about nine minutes slower from text, is that... You can follow the story too, especially, <laughs> and especially if you haven't played the game yourself too. Like, I, 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 I generally appreciate that in an RPG run. Imagine if Half Minute Hero was <laughs> one letter <laughs> at a... All right, so then um, we, re we released um, the Queen of uh, 
Magrid Castle, which uh, I know it, it has some different, the, the, the title she has in Japanese has some different implications to it than, uh, than in English that's just kind of lost in translation. But uh, she, um, she's pretty clearly up to no good, but uh, we trust her to give us a VIP card to get into the East Tower. And um, she slipped it into our pocket. Yeah, it doesn't even the game doesn't even tell us what it is. We just have to look in our inventory and find out. That she gave us a VIP card, but um, but yeah. So this is the last um, dungeon area of Magrid Castle. Uh, the, you have to do a bunch of fights here, but fortunately, those fireballs being shot from the statues only do one damage each, so it's. Not, it's it doesn't, it doesn't hurt anywhere nearly as badly as the enemies do. All right. If you get lucky, you can really nail those. Uh, but so the, uh, the chest knights are also invincible when they stick out their little uh, spikes. And they really hurt, too. So I want to make sure that I don't take a death war before we want to, which we don't actually want to right here. So... We're gonna proceed with caution. Mm -hmm. Right here, after, after this next turn, there's kind of a neat opportunity to manipulate one of the chest knights to just completely get out of your way. Just, yeah, having some having some good gems here is really nice for um, for taking out these knights from afar. Just because because you, these ones where it's not always really easy to not take damage from the boomerangs if you actually have to get close to them too. All right, so we're coming up on the lo kind of the, lo the lo really the longest um, story sequence in the game where we uh, where we get to uh, talk to Dr. Leo and then find out that uh, Queen Magrid was actually uh, behind the whole plot to um, to. Um, to, to sell everybody's soul to uh, to Death Toll, and then uh, well, that's all going on. Um, let's have some donations. You know, I just want to say real quick, you all are amazing. Hero 3D has been met. Thank you very Woo! much. We got a twenty-five dollar donation from Sovnum. Three seconds sounds like fun. We got a $120 donation from Null Fate that just says, no comment here, carry on. And a $10 donation from Demarine who asks, which half of the minute do we get? <laughs> also, a couple more uh, donations uh, in honor of the fallen friend. Um, one being a $50 donation from McDole that says, in memory of my raiding friend in Final Fantasy XIV. And a $22 donation from Kessin Chu. As a person with some mental illness, this cause is of particular relevance to me. Happy to donate to it. Good luck on the rest of the run, Axeman. Cheers from Brazil. Thank you. All right, so after giving us the key to his airship that he was about to escape on, um, Dr. Leo sacrifices himself to, um, to uh, take out Queen Magrid and her soldiers. And then at this point, we just kind of head on out to the airship. Basically, <laughs> yeah. kind of you can go in there and get his last, and you know, hear his last words, which are actually quite, he's actually quite loquacious for someone, you know, dying after blowing himself up. But, um, you know, he has, he has some interesting stuff to say. Mm -hmm. All right, but, but with, that, with that out of the way, now it is time for Demon Bird or Demon Falcon, which is one of the biggest sources of randomness in the game. So every cycle, it's, I don't know if the exact odds are known, but it feels like roughly 50-50 uh, Demon Bird has a chance to either swoop or go to the side and shoot fireballs. Then it takes two fireball patterns to kill it. And then we're, do the, the, we're just moving, moving Soul Blazer in a way to kind of lock the bird in a position where we can poke it to death when it, when it does a fireball pattern. I want to move all the way down in between so that he doesn't, because he, he bases where, how far he moves up based on your position. So you want to make sure you move down so that he doesn't move up like way uh, up too high where you wouldn't be able to poke him. <laughs> So that was what, like seven or eight dives or so, too. Yeah, at least. Like that was. I mean, a, yeah. a really fast fight is zero, and I think the record, the, at least the record with video proof for highest number is like 22. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. 
It's really unfortunate that one of the most random elements of the run is so late, too. Yeah. So that's the next to last boss in the game. Yeah, that added probably like 20 seconds here. So Lisa is going to thank us for being with her and her father while he passed away, even though we sort of just went on and beat the boss. Um, she's going to kind of like open up a little bit and say that, you know, are you a real human being? And, and uh, she's been thinking about us. I, I think of Lisa as sort of like a Sundara heroine because, you know, in the beginning, she kind of like said, you know, why are you in my house? Get out and then, you know, come back. So she, she kind of like turns away pretty quickly, but she has this, and then she's gonna, you know, she's gonna turn around. She doesn't want to see us crying. So she's, you know, has that sort of aspect to her. Nice, then we just head back to uh, Magrid Castle and then just really, Quickly, uh, all is forgiven with King Magrid, and he gives us the stone. And then, yeah, and, if we, th and this is a very minor detour to pick up the uh, super bracelet, which is um, it, it does the same thing as the power bracelet with doubling your attack power, but it also doubles your defense too, which is very nice for the for the end game. Probably squeeze in a few more donations or words too while we're. Uh, Wrapping up Magrid Castle here. Well, I have one more donation. It's a $25 anonymous that just says, I love RPG LB, <laughs> love Nami, and thanks for having this, everyone. But you know something else I should shout out? Something we haven't heard a whole lot of yet. The Yeti! Everyone here loves the Yeti, right? <laughs> yes, we are partnered once again with the Yeti, and we have six awesome shirts that you can only get this week, involving uh, six different uh, games on the schedule. There's, there's a really awesome one, by the way, that, that I think a lot of people, you know, I love the, 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 the sword and the warrior of light and the cloud, yeah. Just go to the yeti.com slash RPG, or RPG LB to look for them. That's the yeti, T-H-E-Y-E-T-E-E.com slash RPG LB. So now we're entering the world of evil. The world of evil dispenses with um, uh, having a, sort of a, uh, a town area, but we do have these monster layers still that we have to beat and open up and uh, in order to kind of progress. Uh, but there's no NPCs and no town. Just get through here and uh, defeat Death Toll. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the master did mention that uh, we need to collect some items before we can take on Death Soul. Yeah, the three symbols or something. I forget what the... The red hot the uh, items. items. Yeah, the red hot items. Which, what, what did they mean in Japanese again? Oh, so they are the... Uh, so it's definitely a reference to the Imperial Regalia of Japan. Um, which is a sword, a mirror, and a gem, I think. Um, it's a little more obvious than the Japanese version based on what they, you know, the words they use. But, um, and it's also, it's a fairly deep Shinto reference that's pretty much lost on like the Western audience, I think. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's kind of where, what we're getting here. Um, the word in Japanese that they use for red hot is shakunetsu, which is usually translated as burning. It's this really cool Japanese word that you'll hear in like a lot of anime. All right, so um, uh, do, in addition to needing the red hot items, we also need to get the soul blade and the soul armor, which are the strongest sword and armor in the game, but uh, they are also just hard requirements. Like we get the soul armor there, which uh, um, let's us breathe in outer space, but not underwater, sadly. <laughs> and uh, if we didn't have that, we'd just take a ton of damage um, whenever those uh, spooky uh, meteors with faces on them appear in the background. It's just not, it's just not possible to, uh, to not have the soul armor here. Let me get the soul blade, strongest weapon in the game. And it, I believe it can just damage every, it, pretty much anything that any type of sword can damage. And the level requirement for the Soul Blade is 24. And we, we're going to need to hit that because 
poking with the soul blade is enough to take out these little walls but we're going to need to swing it in order to defeat uh, the final boss and actually actually to activate the final spell uh, that we need we're going to get a very special magic that they were talking about earlier the phoenix and uh, in order to use the phoenix we have to swing the the blade we have to swing our sword and it has to be the soul blade um, it's very it's different from all the other magics although it counts as a magic in our equipment and so it doesn't come out of our soul it comes out of our sword yeah and then the phoenix is where the red hot items and then a bit of other uh, optional stuff seemingly optional stuff we did earlier in the mountain of souls all comes into play too as far as helping letting us both get to and then defeat death toll but yeah, so um, yeah, kind of as, as proof that the developers of this game were big fans of internet <laughs> memes, uh, the experience requirement to reach level 24 and beat the game is 420,000. So X-Man basically just ha had a number um, in mind as far as the amount of experience he wanted to grind off of those uh, floaty tiles and then just the rest, of the, a few other fights he's gonna have to do um, after this will top it off. get the red hot ball the first one then the other two red hot items are actually in previous worlds um we had you have to do a bit of backtracking to use the uh to specifically just use weapons that um that you pick that you pick up later on to kill enemies that uh, you that were invincible the first time you encountered them the first one is going to be in our favorite undersea volcano here. Mm -hmm. Durian. And here we see, this is, like we said before, the, the soul armor, we, we can breathe in space, but not underwater. So we're going to take damage here, and that's totally fine, because we're getting ready for a warp after we get our, uh, after we get the thing we need. Yeah, and this is also where skipping the uh, mermaid tier quest earlier on will save a bit of time too, just because uh, once we've gotten the um, the uh, release the mermaid that gives us the red hot item here, we can um, step into the lava and then, and then take out the rest of our health that way, whereas if we'd have used the mermaid's tiers, it'd be a lot slower. Yeah, just taking a lot of intentional damage on the uh, monkeys there in order to uh, speed up the uh, the death warp afterwards. One last little bit of the rock and St. Elle's Island theme here too. I like to think of this mermaid as the, the red hot mermaid because she's gonna give us the red hot uh, stick. The phoenix, I mean, so the wet, the, the attack definitely looks like a phoenix. It's like a, you know, a blazing red bird thing. Um, but in Japanese, it's actually called God Bird. It's mm -hmm. like, and it's spelled out in katakana, which is kind of funky. <laughs> Kamitori or anything like that. No, no. Bado, bado. They like a lot of NPCs refer to it as like Hinotori, which is like bird of fire. But no, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, when you actually get it in your inventory. So these um kind of suns here, you would you you could have beaten them with the spirit sword, but since the soul blade does it too, we just um we just use that. Yeah, and the Soul Blade is, it's really strong. And you can see we got our level up now, so we can swing it. Because yeah, when I played this game as a kid, every time I got a new sword, I would always go back to all the previous worlds and then go fight all the monsters that I couldn't before. But um, but yeah, for, for the speed run, it's just a lot more efficient to just save all of it for the very end here. Yeah, just because we can like totally bang these guys out. We've got our Super Bracelet. Uh, we've got our Soul Blade. And uh, that's our last NPC that we'll need to release in our run here. Um, and I think of him, of course, he's the red hot bird. <laughs> so we're gonna be talking to him. He can be kind of annoying. If we don't do it right, he'll, um, he'll kind of like fly again, which is really annoying. It'll drop some time, but let's try and see if we can talk to him. We gotta reach up behind him. 
Yeah, this this can be a little obnoxious too, as far as li lining it up just right too, without scaring the bird away again. Okay, so that's our third and final red hot item. So yeah, so then um, we go to the, we go back to the Mountain of Souls. If we'd have actually talked to the Mountain King after releasing him, or, I mean, he'd have told us the same thing he's about to tell us now, basically, which is telling us about the Phoenix and the uh, the three treasures that will um, that will unseal it. So um, um, in order to get the Phoenix, we need to both have the red hot items, but also have released the two these two grandmas here from uh, from the Lake Loon earlier. So that's why we did that, even though that was a fair bit of extra combat. Yeah, and we also needed uh, all of the NPCs that kind of opened the path here too. There was like a, a grandpa and a grand, uh, a boy at least, and uh, so we could have gotten that first uh, conversation Dancing earlier. Dancing grandma. Dancing grandma. That's right. <laughs> This is a good time for like a seventh ending stretch. I mean, we're just going to go right to the final boss after this, but it's uh, a nice little break. So this little palace was not there before, but now it is. And we can go in there and take on Death Toll. Yeah, like so. Death, the death toll fight is has two phases. The first is an absolute joke. We're just gonna, uh, it's a, <laughs> just gonna hit him a few times with our sword, and he explodes. And then the re for the real fight, um, that's the one where we need the phoenix basically in order to be able to actually damage death toll's head. And I believe I want to say it's like 52, or it's something in the something 50s. Something like that, yeah. Number of because you, you aren't able to actually see death toll's uh, health bar. But I know it's somewhere in the low to mid 50s as far as the number of uh, the number of hits you need with the Phoenix. Yeah, it'll take um, 12 to 13 cycles. It's apparently possible in 12. I think I've always needed 13, which isn't so bad. Yeah, because it's four, I want to say, is the highest number of hits you can get per cycle. And we don't we don't want to use the phoenix i mean not that we even have gems at this point yeah, yeah we don't really we, there's no point in using the phoenix on uh the first phase so we just like, wait until after uh, it explodes to equip the phoenix it. causes a lot of lag too so it's better not to do it at a time when all right so then the way this works too is that for every cycle death toll will create four fire pillars that we have to uh D defeat um, to move on in the cycle, but then also they also pick up gems that we can use. And then uh, doing this fight optimally is really about lag management in a lot of ways too, just because when you have both um, Death Toll's fire broth and then also those je those lasers from his scepters on screen at the same time, it causes a lot of lag. So there's often kind of a lot of judgment calls needed on um, if you just want to accept the lag or if you want to hesitate a little bit to get the lasers off screen. And then uh, time is coming up too, by the way. When, uh, it's when Death Toll explodes. When Death Toll explodes um, is, uh, is time. Like how the background for Death Toll's room gets reused as the uh, submenu in Illusion of Gaia, the next game, too. The clouds. I, Death Toll pretty much gets reused as the, I guess, reskinned. Mm hmm. Dan All right. Oh, I was. Well, you'd last 40 seconds from an eight-character name, though, so that would have that, yeah, that, yeah. that would have been sub 140 if you had a uh, one-character name. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the, um, if it's not clear, it's the magician's soul that will stay and seal the world of evil. Um, and then we will go on and uh, go back to the master and uh, I guess continue our studies as his disciple. Yeah, although we ultimately just abandoned that in order to become a, uh, become a mortal, in order to, uh, in order to meet Lisa. 
Yes, we are, are too attached to the mortal world. And uh, yeah, so the ending goes on for a while. Um, you know, it involves going around and talking to all the different people, uh, telling us, uh, you know, uh, how grateful they are to be saved and something they learned. Um, it's a, you know, it's a very deep, very deep plot, very mm -hmm. deep game. Which is a theme in Quintet's games, really. Yeah. They just have a lot of deep stuff about, like, life and death, reincarnation, um, just, uh, just relationships between people in the world and animals and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, really nice run. So I guess any uh, shout outs or uh, is there anything you got uh, for us? Shout out to everyone in the um, in the rando community and uh, in the speedrun community that I've been. Uh, I saw we got a donation from Hulk, the world record holder. Um, probably a few other people in there. Um, thanks everyone who's who's watching and donating. Um, you know, normally at this point, I would like thank my family for letting me come out here, but they actually came here and they're sitting right behind me. So, you know, I could just sort of like say, hey, thanks for coming out here. Um, I so this is like my first time not bringing Taskbot. Taskbot was was booked. He's at um, Magfest right now, mm -hmm. uh, but it was really Taskbot and Dwango AC, his keeper, that kind of got me into speed running and and coming to these events and everything. So um, you know, I, I, I still got a shout out to him and everyone in his Taskbot community. Um, he's going to be taking a European vacation and mm -hmm. going to ESA. So that'll be Taskbot's next big show. Um, Anything else? Uh, I guess there's a few people from the Chrysalis community that came by, um, and we have a tournament coming up, so uh, that's going to be that's going to be pretty hype. Um, at least one of the other participants in the tournament is going to be here at RPG Limit Break. So if I see him, um, it's going to be a challenge to a practice race here. <laughs> um, I think that's uh, that's good for shoutouts for me. Thank you very much, X-Man, for that run of Soul Blazer. You know, it's been a while since I haven't seen that game randomized. So it was it was almost like I forgot about it. Well, that is my time is up for the for now, but coming up next, taking over on the host shift, will be the lovely and very high energy Silver Deeds, who also has an amazing, I think at the D20 pendant on. Oh yeah. So uh, we're going to send this over to ads now, and we will be back shortly.
from High Spirit hosting. Did such a great job. I am Silver Deeds. You can find me online at AG Deeds. I will be hosting for you for this upcoming run. And this will actually be my first debut hosting, so please be kind to me, chat. I do have a couple donations I'd love to read for you guys. Uh, first one is $10 from Sarah Beth Winters and gave a little heart, a, a carrot three heart. Thank you so much for your awesome donation. Next, I have Eddie giving $100, guys. Oh my goodness. For Mighty Blue! Exclamation mark. 